it's a crime, Mr. Collins. It surely is. Rockabye Daddy in your old rocking chair. But keep your eyes open, there's a murderer there. That's an old traditional nursery rhyme I made up just this minute. And if it sounds plum loco, it's at least consistent. For this is a story of murder that took place in a western town notable for its plum loco-ness. Yes, it's Gail Collins here, and in a moment I'll be back to set the stage for our puzzling crime. It's a crime, Mr. Collins. A town notable for a... What was it you called it, Gail? Plum loco-ness, Jack. A disease common to small towns out in the wild, wild west that still think that what Hollywood can do, they can do better. Really? Do such places really exist? Yep, they sure do, partner. <laughs> now, let me tell you. Greg and I were on our way back from California, driving across the Navajo Desert. That's all Indian country, you know. And I figure they were glad to get rid of it. Well, after we had traveled for nearly three hours, we saw our first sign of civilization. Do my eyes deceive me, darling? A sign, a sign. Civilization. Well, let's see what it says. Dry Gulch. Smaller city in the West. And still by far the golden best. Now, isn't that cute? <laughs> Pop. One hundred living, two thousand dead. I wonder when that census was taken. A handful of old frame houses in the desert. <gasps> Greg, it's a ghost town. What ghost will live here? Come on, let's take a look around. Oh, it's completely deserted. Just not a sound. Yeah, this kind of spooky. If there was just one live thing around, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Dry Gulch is 100 years old. And seeing you're our first visitor, we've got a little surprise for you. Greg, they're mad. All of them. The natives seem friendly. Let's see what happens. And now, ma'am, and you, sir, if you come up to this platform with me. What do we do, Greg? Come on, I don't think they're going to lynch us. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Shorthorn, Jonathan Shorthorn, mayor of Dracal City. And uh, whom do I have the honor of addressing? Well, I'm Greg Collins, and this is my wife. Folks, I'd like you to meet our surprise strangers. And they seem a mighty nice young couple, Mr. and Mrs. Collins. <laughs> Visitors of ours are come near dying of curiosity. <laughs> yeah, is that right, boy? Eh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I won't keep them in suspense any longer. Hmm. One hundred years ago today, a stranger came along here and on this spot found a nugget of gold. That stranger was my grandfather. Jonathan Shorthorn the first. Thus he became the founder and first settler of Dry Gulch. Well, it took 100 years to teach us that there ain't no more gold here. You mean you're celebrating because there's no more gold? We're celebrating because we know there's something just as good. <laughs> Geologists say this territory is loaded with rich minerals. There's claxite, and it's our guess there's uranium, too. But now, Mr. and Mrs. Collins, we plan the ceremony as being sort of appropriate. As the first strangers in the town, you are repeating an event which took place exactly 100 years ago. We ain't got no gold for you, but we do offer you the warmest welcome in the world. And now, Mr. Collins, I'm a-handin' over my office. 
making you mayor of Dry Gulch City for the day. The town is yours, and we'd like you to be our guest. Well, uh, Mayor Shorthorn, ladies and gentlemen... It's Jonathan! It's Jonathan! Jay, not uh, now. Go on, Mr. Collins. Yeah, well, well uh, as I was saying... Uh, Jonathan, I'm we, sorry, uh, but I... Could... We had no idea... What is it? When we, uh, you come right when away. we came into oh, your God, town this morning... Watch it. That, uh, Keep going, kid. Don't uh, let them throw you. Well, you I mean, I, just now? Well, in the back, see, yeah. Uh, Mr. Collins, excuse me, but, uh, uh folks, uh, something dreadful has happened. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid this shows off temporarily. Jake here, the sheriff of our town, tells me that Bart Connors is here. Well, there has had an accident. Men shall murder in front of my husband, and he makes like a gun dog on a duck shooting expedition. Quivering nose and all. You'll get a better idea in a moment, so keep your ears pinned, friends. We'll be back in a moment with more of our story. Small it may be, but even its worst enemies wouldn't deny that Dry Gulch had quite an imagination. The surprise party anniversary idea might not stir much excitement at a meeting of the Junior Chamber of Commerce, but when it came to murder, the smallest city in the West really had a hit on its hands. I might have known Bart Connors would spoil the party. Would any other self-respecting citizen get a self-kill today? Uh, who is, uh, oh, who was Bart Connors, Mr. Shorthorn? Bart Connors was the owner of this here saloon, the here wagon wheel saloon. Hey, he's still there. Well, that guy sitting in the rocking chair, the murder doesn't seem to worry him much. That's him. Huh? Oh. You mean that... Yep, yeah, that's Bart there, uh, on the rocking chair. <laughs> He yeah, looks real peaceful, don't he, sitting in the sun? <laughs> looks dead to the world, don't he, eh? <laughs> ah, be... He's been stabbed in the back, right through the back of the chair. Don't touch the body, anybody. <clears throat> Jake, uh, I'm calling the state police. Do whatever you have to, then get the body off of the sidewalk. Yeah, okay, Jonathan, okay. And when you're through, come over to my place. You're coming, Mr. Collins? Well, I'll catch up with you later. I'll see you at my place. Uh, Jonathan will tell you where it is. If you care to stay the night, we'll be real delighted to have you both. That body's been there for quite a few hours, Jake. How come it hasn't been seen? It has been. As a matter of fact, I was talking to it myself about an hour ago. I don't get it. No, I guess you don't. Uh, hmm. and you ain't gonna. One thing, it ain't none of your business. Okay, Dad. Come on, Gail. Oh, wait, Greg. Jake, you are worried, aren't you? Can't we help you at all? Eh, yeah, yeah, may as well admit. Yep, I'm worried. Greg's a detective, a fully qualified licensed detective. Yeah, that's so, huh? Well, wouldn't help any if he was the FBI. Know who the killer was? Known all along. Who? <laughs> Say, man, you'll be staying with tonight. Old Jonathan Shorthorn. Oh, Greg, I, I can't bear being here in Miss Shorthorn's house, knowing all the time that... Well, Just a moment. Oh, hello. I'm Kitty Shorthorn. My father told me we were up here in the guest room. Oh, how do you do? I, I'm Greg Collins, and... Uh... Over there making the repairs is my wife, Gail. Oh, hello, Kitty. As you can see, we're making ourselves at home. Oh, please do. I... Oh, Mr. Collins, what's it all about? Oh, here. <laughs> here, sit down on the bed. What's it all about? Jake said Dad killed Connors. But he didn't. He didn't. Well, of course he didn't, Kitty. We know that, too. But you must be brave. Oh. Kitty. Oh. Uh, Kitty, we're with you. We want to help you. Now, you'll have to tell us everything you know about this. I don't know what Jake told me. Kitty. Kitty, what did Jake tell you? He told me that 
Bart Connors was lazing out in front of the saloon. Same as he does every day. That was about 10 o'clock this morning. All the men, they sit out in front of the saloon and talk and sleep. Go on. Well, this morning they were walking over to sit down and they saw Dad there, standing up abusing Bart Connors. Then when they got close, he hurried off past them. Jake said he looked real mad. But, Craig, Jake told you all this. I'd like the story over again. Kitty, do you mind? Honey, believe me, I'm trying to help. Did, did, Did any of these men actually see your father do anything to Connors? No. Jake said he just saw Dad standing there and then he hurried off. And then the others, the three of them, Jake and Mr... Yeah. Well, they just sat down alongside Mr. Connors. He had his hat over his face like he always does. They thought he was asleep or not talking or something. But he must have been dead then. So they just sat down and they dozed in the sun, too. How long were they there? Did Jake say? About two hours, I suppose. Kitty, did Jake tell you that it was your father's knife? Yes, but he didn't do it. He didn't. Oh, uh, excuse me, folks, but uh, Kitty girl, have to ask you to pack your old man's grip. What do you mean, Jake? I'm sorry, girlie, but it's that interfering varmint that no good scoundrel makes. Yeah. Reckons I'm taking advantage of my position as sheriff, and he insists that I arrest your father. Jake, you wouldn't. I ain't got no choice now, girlie. Now, get his grip ready. I'm taking him down to the jailhouse now. And the charge is murder. And that's how our first few hours in Dry Gulch ended, with Jake almost tearfully arresting Mayor Shorthorn for the murder of Bart Connors. There was little Jake could do about it. The charges were certainly explicit. First, Shorthorn's known attitude to the victim. He hated him. Check. Second, Shorthorn's location to the victim at the estimated time of death. Right alongside. Check. Third, Shorthorn's link with the murder weapon. Owner. Check. Three checks. Bingo. The home side loses. And yours truly has a disconsolate orphan to be on her hands. Little Kitty Shorthorn. Kitty, how about this Mapes character? The one who insisted on Jake arresting your father. Where does he fit into the picture? If Dad had any enemies, they were Bart Connors and the man you just mentioned, Grover Mapes. And Mapes was the guy who busted a boy to getting your father into jail. How about that, Hawkshaw? It bears considering. Dad hated Connors. Connors was a crook. There were any number of things that Dad and Jake knew Connors was mixed up in, but nothing they could prove. He ran a card game at the back of the saloon. That was definitely crooked. Well, that's interesting background, but it's also excellent material for a motive. And Mapes? Mapes is a very rich man, and he's always envied Dad standing in the community. He owns a lot of cattle land east of here. He's an investor, too. But no one knows much about his business activities at all. Mm, the mystery man. Another thing, he and Bart Connors were very thick. In fact, Grover Mapes was about the only man in the community that Connors was friendly with. Well, at least it's a link. Dad and Jake were frightened that if Mapes won the next election, he'd make Connors sheriff. You mean Mapes wants to run for mayor? Yes, didn't you know? The election's tomorrow. Today's celebration was sort of a uh, climax to his year in office. Would have been a great success, too. Dad was a certainty to have won the election tomorrow. Well, there, there could be a reason why Mapes wanted to be mayor. Where does he live, Kitty? He has an office in town. He sleeps in the back room. But right now he's probably celebrating Dad's arrest. Fine. And this is the time to pay Mr. Mapes a visit. <laughs> Chase the back of this joint. I've been the one to play long shots before, but this is ridiculous. Here's a window. Uh, closed. Instruments ready, nurse? Yes, sir. Nail file? Nail file. Uh, nail file. I felt sure it was in my bag. Ah, oh, here it is. Nail file? Shoe. Oh, all right. Shoe. Now, a small tap here. And pressure here. And there... Voila. Now, up with the window. The ladies first. Oh, well, let's not stand on ceremony. After you. If you insist. Come on. In you come, girl. Oh, there's his desk over there. Great, what are we looking for? What do you hope to find? If I find anything, I'll be amazed. Let's stop with these papers. You take that pile and I'll glance through these. 
These are all sharebrokers' reports. What have you got? Oh, just some old maps and letters from the government lands office in Washington. Well, let's see. Hey, I think we've struck oil. Or better still, uranium. Here, hold the torch. What's this for? Map? Letters. Well, that's a map of government territory. Yeah, look at this. A geologist's report on the area. And, and listen to this. The Geiger count of this area indicates an extremely high proportion of radioactive mineral. The uranium. Gail, that's the land in this area. But look at this, Greg. Applications for government territory. Where'd you get that? The same file. Gail, this is real evidence. This is the link we want. What is it? This is an application for government land made out by Bart Connors and made over to Grover Mapes. But, but what's it mean? Is it proof that Mapes killed Connors? Not in itself, but it's a link. And it could be a motive. We'll take these papers with us. Let's have some light on what we're doing, Mr. Collins. Mr. Mapes, I presume. Correct. Quick, get in the door. No, you don't. I aim for your head then, Collins. Take your hat off and see how much I miss by. You missed. That's good enough for me. You all right, Gail? Yes. The two of you sit down on that couch. Now, don't try anything, or I'll shoot and kill you both. And the law will be right behind me. Now, that's the idea, Collins. What's the idea? Did you find any money? They weren't after money, Mapes, and you know it. You're right, Collins. You were after something to tie me in on Connor's murder. Something that would get that sanctimonious old fool short on off the hook and me on it. That's what you were looking for, but you won't find it. You can't, because I had nothing to do with Connor's murder. Short on killed him with that spring-loaded knife of his, and everyone knows it. In this state, killers get the chair, and short on's going to fry. Now get... You couple of cheap crooks. Get out of here and get out of town. You know, this is definitely not our town. Not one clue, nothing. I'm convinced that old short owners in the clear, and I'm just as sure that Mapes is guilty, but how? Why? Look, drive me over to the jail. I'll see if Jake will let me see short on. Well, what good will that do? You never know. Anyway, I can't think of anything else. You can drive back to Kitty's and get some sleep. Well, this is a heck of a way to run a jail. Do you play poker with all your prisoners, Jake? Come in, my boy. Come in. There ain't much of a bunkhouse, but... Jake, do you mind if I ask Mr. Shorthorn some questions? No, go ahead. Waste of time, though. Ask anything you like, my boy. I'm in the doggone hole, and I know it. Did you know that Mapes is making application for government territory in this area? No, no. Can't say that I do. Any application must go through me as mayor. And that's something I ain't aiming to do. There's every indication of uranium around this country, and Mapes is the last person I see get his big hands on. But tomorrow Mapes will be mayor. You're in jail. You can't run. Jakes, I told you. I told you that credit was a crook. You see what happens? If he gets to be mayor, the whole town will be shot to pieces. Now, Jonathan, don't get excited. We've got to prove your innocence and get you out of here. That's the first thing. Ah, what's the use, son? I'm tired like a heifer. The evidence is too strong against me. But it was your knife. You were seen arguing with him. Jake saw himself. I admit it. It was my knife. I was talking to him, but that don't mean that he was arguing back. What do you mean? He just sat there, darn it. I said it before, and I see it now. He was a crook, and I hate crooks in my town. As soon as I saw him sitting there, I went over and told him to get out of town. Get out, you crook, I said. Get out of a decent town. And he just sat there? Yep, yeah, that kind of sure used to make Jonathan mad. He didn't say anything. And he could have been dead while you were talking to him. Yeah. Like he was when we sat alongside him, with his hat over his face. Well, yes, of course. But that still doesn't explain the knife. <laughs> that knife <laughs> never was any good. Used to cut up everything. Couldn't get a cheese to fit it, so I quit using it. What did you do with it? Tossed it on the table of the office. It was stolen about a month ago. Look, I'm going over to the scene of the murder again. Maybe there's something we missed. Ah, uh, go on home to sleep, son. Ain't nothing you can do. 
Like the good wife I am, I went home to bed, and I must say that that husband of mine has a smart as well as a good-looking head on his shoulders. So hold tight, folks. In just a moment, we'll bring you the climax of the case. At ten the next morning in the bar of the saloon, which was serving as the local public hall, the candidates for the mayoral office were making their last-minute speeches. At least one was. Poor old Jonathan Shorthorn was still in jail. The other, friend Mapes, had the race to himself and was cantering home over the last furlong of his vindictive speech. I'm a friend, stand for a clean, decent local government. A noble, upstanding... Just a moment, Mapes. What's going on here? I thought I told you to get out of this town. What do you want? Hang on there, Mapes. I'm coming up to the platform. I'm warning you, Collins. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize if I may seem rude in interrupting your meeting, but yesterday, as part of your centennial celebrations, you made me mayor of Dry Gulch. Last night, I checked with Mr. Jonathan Shorthorn, and he told me that was no phony title. Legally, I was made mayor of Dry Gulch for one day. This morning, as mayor, I exercised the right of my office. I made an order binding the territorial limits of this city over to the state. Now, wait a minute. I did it for a reason, and I think that Mapes here understands. From the time he takes office, he intends to apply and grant himself the Dry Gulch territory known to contain uranium. Why? And there would have been nothing to stop it. And I use the past tense, because Mapes is never becoming mayor. Instead, he's going to the chair for the murder of Bart Collins. He's pleading. Get over him. He's pleading. Grab him, Jake. Don't let him go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to me, I'll prove it. Yesterday morning, after an argument in the Wagon Wheel Saloon with Mapes, Connors went outside one of those rockers on the sidewalk. Mapes, still incensed, fluttered him out. But Connors refused even to talk. In his cut hopping way, he merely covered his face with his Stetson and pretended to go to sleep. Now, about a month ago, Mapes stole Jonathan Shorthorn's knife from his office. He saw it on the table and he just took it. Now, as Mapes will tell you, that knife was a spring loader. You know, trick knife. The blade packs back into the handle. And with a slight pressure on the hilt of the handle, springs out with tremendous force. Well, yesterday morning, Mapes saw his opportunity. While Connors rocked on, Mapes rested the loaded knife on the windowsill just behind Connors' back. He just left it there and walked away. Poor old Connors rocking away nice and peaceful. And then one rock too long. His shoulder touches the hilt of the knife and... Connors rocked himself to sleep for good. So that... Husband? Hmm? How did you know it was Mapes who stole the knife? Well, that night I spoke to Jonathan in jail. He mentioned the knife in conversation. It wasn't until later, when I was inspecting Connor's rocking chair, that I realized that earlier Mapes had caught it a spring-loaded knife, remember? Yes, I remember. All the years he had it, Shorthorn thought it was an ordinary knife. Everyone did. Everyone except Mapes. And then... When I realized the significance of it being a spring loader, I went over the murder scene again, put two and two together, and Jack's your uncle. And Greg's my husband. My very smart, clever husband. Aren't you, darling? Hey, watch it. I'm on the road. Don't go away. In just a moment, we'll be back with you. Well, folks, Gail and I hope you've enjoyed our adventure, Rocker by Murder. Be sure to visit us next time for another Puzzle in Murder. For whether it's crime and romance, there you'll find Mr. And Mrs. Collins. Mr. Collins.